Thank you. I'm Jonathan Feinberg. I most recently have been working on a thing called Python mode, which lets you write processing sketches that use the actual processing Java runtime, but in the Python language. So uh, I privileged using the processing runtime when designing Python mode uh, over things like being fast or also being able to use your existing Python installation. Unfortunately, that includes also using things like SciPy or NumPy. Those things might be coming. So why did I do it? <laughs> uh, one of the privileges of working at Google where I do during the day is that uh, we have various programs for training younger people or teaching them or hanging out with them. And one of those is called the Computer Science Summer Institute. And uh, we had a room full of super bright, very motivated young people. They were there for a bunch of weeks, and they were learning Python. I wasn't teaching them or anything. I, I just knew about them. I saw they were there. Uh, one of the, I think the Make book had recently come out, Getting Started. And uh, so I said, can you, can you give me a bunch of copies of this book? I will give them a one-day introduction to processing. And I did. And what I found was everything I'd been told about why Python had been created or the way it had been created was true. The kids were really hung up on semicolons. They were really hung up on braces. They would, there were syntax errors, and they were always of a particular kind. And uh, it really got in their way. And I left the room that day thinking and saying to their teacher, it would be awesome if they could write processing sketches using Python syntax. And uh, for whatever reason, being between children, I had just enough mental energy and, and actual sleep to get it done before that next kid got to that age. So uh, I got it basically done. So just a, a brief demo, if you like. It's not actually a live demo, but just to show you, there's a, a canonical processing program. It's just a little sketch that makes a couple three-dimensional objects, uh, uses a third-party library, that happens to be one I wrote, to do camera control. And here's the same program in Python mode. It actually could have been written line for line the same, but I used a with statement at the end of the draw function just to show off that you can do that and you can use indentation to indicate that sort of structure. I noticed that actually in one of the JavaScript programs we saw that there was a push and a pop and the code was indented, but of course that indentation isn't actually meaningful in JavaScript. So here in Python, whether you love it or you hate it, indentation is actually syntactically meaningful. That's really all there is to say about it. The whole point of it is same programs because being lazy, I didn't want to have to write new documentation or anything. I thought if I can make it exactly the same, uh, then they can use the existing documentation. That worked for a while, but actually nobody liked that, so now there exists proper documentation. And uh, which leads me to thank, I mean, this is not a complete list, uh, that would take a while. But um, Alison Parrish, is she here today? I've been looking for her. She, no, that's too bad. So she uh, ported the Getting Started book into Python, which was a, a gargantuan effort. And she also completely cleaned up the uh, scripts that generate the documentation that I push whenever I can. Uh, and then various people who were Google Summer of Code, uh, either the students or mentors, uh, who did critical work, especially uh, Luca Damasco, who took my mess that worked with Processing 2 and not Processing 3, and he made the initial changes that made it possible. That's all. Thank you very much.